Robin here from Cheese From Scratch and today I am making cheddar cheese. So I'm making a traditional variety of cheddar cheese today. Um, so the traditional variety um, is different from a uh, basic stirred curd variety because the end process where you actually cheddar those curds is a little bit different and I'm going to get um, a little more in depth into that later on in the video. Um, but your first step here, um, as with most hard pressed cheese recipes, is you're going to get your milk to the correct temperature for culturing. So right now I am warming my milk up to about 88 degrees Fahrenheit, um, between 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit is what you want um, for culturing this cheese because it is a low temperature cultured cheese, so a mesophilic culture is what I'm going to be using today. So I have six liters of good quality raw milk here. Um, so I am going to add in about three quarter of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. And I just have like a basic mesophilic freeze dried culture. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it out. So just a basic freeze dried culture. So when you are adding freeze dried culture to your milk, you want to um, sprinkle it on the top of your milk in the most even way possible. You don't want a, huge, a bunch of clumps on top because those are um, more difficult to incorporate. So at this point, I am going to let um, that freeze dried culture rehydrate for about five minutes before I come back and I stir it in. So I'm just gonna incorporate my freeze dried culture now into my milk because it's rehydrated. So you just wanna make sure that you're doing up and down motions all the way to, way to the bottom of your pot so that you're really incorporating that culture throughout your milk. And then we're going to put the lid on this pot and I'm going to let it ripen for about 40 minutes. So I just cut my grid of curds. I cut them about one inch by one inch, um, approximate. And then um, I'm just letting them firm up for about five minutes and then I'm going to start stirring them. So I wanna reach a little bit over 100 degrees, but I want it to take 45 minutes before I reach um, that 10 degree jump. So right now I'm about 90 degrees and I'm gonna start stirring and I'll turn my heat on low and then I'll turn it off, turn my heat on low and I'm just gonna be really careful not to heat my curds too fast because I want them to start to release that way and just heat really nice and slowly. So for basically any cheese when I first start off stirring I always kind of stir with a spoon first just so that I can really skim and um, get those, cheese, uh, those curds as uniform as I can. And then a little bit later on into the stirring, once my curds are a little bit stronger, that's when I start to stir with my hand. I just find it um, easier to break up the curds when you are using your hand versus you can be a little bit more gentle when you're using um, a spoon. No fingers. So I've been stirring for about five minutes here. I'm just slowly warming my curds and I'm feeling at this point that it Yes. I'm feeling at this point that I'm going to start stirring with my hand um, because I feel like the curds are getting a little bit stronger and they could have oh, like some finger manipulation right now. That being said, sometimes it is a little bit difficult to stir with your hands if you're also holding a baby in the other hand. <laughs> so uh, I am not opposed to using this spoon the whole time if I have to. So what I'm doing when I'm stirring with my arm here is I'm just gently sweeping down to the bottom of the pot and I'm grabbing off any big chunks that are like about this size and I'm just gently breaking them up. So I don't want to break anything up too much, but about this size is what I'm going for at this point. I'm like maybe 10 minutes into stirring right now. So I'm still being really gentle because these curds are all still very fragile and I don't want to break them up too much because then I'll just have an uneven cheese. If I've got curds that at the end have been teeny tiny, like say this one, this one is gonna be too firm by the end. I want, at this point, I would like my curds to be about this size. 
and I want everybody to cook down at the same rate. And that's going to give me a bit more of a uniform cheese. That being said, cheddar, you will see at the end here, it goes through, through its own um, cheddaring process. So those curds are all going to knit together anyways, but just for a really even textured cheese. You want to try and keep your curds as even as you can. So I'm about 20 minutes into stirring here. And so what most of my curds should start to feel like is they're about this size. This is the general size of my curds at this point. They feel pretty firm when I push them through my fingers, but I can still push through easily. There's none that are super firm. I still have the odd jelly-like piece like this, and I'm just working to slowly kind of break them up. But most of them, most of the jelly-like pieces are gone. And I'm just kind of slowly stirring everybody, making sure nobody's clinging together so that they can all lose their moisture and cook down. And I'm just keeping an eye on my temperature. I've had the heat turned off for most of this time, actually. Just on low for a little bit, turn it off for a bit. And I go by time, but I'm also going by texture and feel of what my curds feel like. I'm using time as a guideline. But making sure to just keep being gentle with my curds. Alright, so I am at about... 35 minutes of stirring now, and I'm really feeling that my curds are starting to firm up a little bit. I'm at just a little under 100 degrees. And so the general size of my curds, let me find something that's general. So the general size of my curds are about that. When you squeeze them together, they are getting more firm than when I checked them before. I don't really have too many jelly clumps anymore. Most of those kind of jelly-like clumps have been broken up. And then this last kind of 15 minutes, I'm just working to make all my curds pretty uniform. Just keep stirring them gently. Anything that's still big like that, I'm just breaking up into smaller pieces. Alright, so I have finished stirring my curds here and I'm sat satisfied with um, where they're at and how they feel. So the bulk of my curds, let's find the bulk. So the bulk of my curds, the ones that haven't knit together because they've already started knitting, are about this size. When you squeeze them between your fingers, they still break apart but they feel firmer than if you squeezed a jelly piece through there. Right now, they, if you squeeze them and kind of break them up, they feel like how cottage cheese should feel. So that is where they're at right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on my pot and I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to leave them here for about 40 minutes. And All right, so my curds have been sitting in the way here for um, about 40 minutes or so. Let's turn my timer off here. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to take all this whey off of here. Um, I just scoop off the first layer until I um, can't scoop it anymore and then I drain the rest through a uh, colander. So I'll show you um, what that looks like. So this is what my curds look like at this point. They have started to cling together a little bit but they're not all one big mass. The masses are about that. They're all kind of uniform size. They feel firmer. They feel much firmer now than when I finished stirring them. Now if you were to squeeze a piece between your finger it feels like a raisin. That's what you're at right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out these curds that are at the bottom here and then I'm going to put them into a colander. Alright, so what I've done here is I have put my curds into a mesh sieve that's suspended above my pot. And I've got about two or three inches of whey left in the bottom of my pot. My heat is turned to low. And what I am doing right now is basically the cheddaring process. So the cheddaring process is where all those curds start to knit together and it's going to give my final product that traditional cheddar texture. So for every 10 minutes, I'm going to come back and I'm going to flip my block over 
And then after 10 minutes of that, I'm going to cut my pieces into four pieces and I'm going to come back and flip them over. And I want every side to get a chance to be pressed down and knit together. And so during this time, my curds are continuing to acidify. They are continuing to have that bacteria working with them. They, know, they don't have salt with them right now, so it's basically just acidification free for all. I'm not manipulating them or anything. Um, yeah, and so I'm just keeping the lid on to keep the temperature nice and warm. Alright, so I've gotten my cheese all cut pretty uniform here, and so now I'm going to add in about four tablespoons of salt. So I'm using um, fine ground salt here, but you can use, um, I've used, you can use any um, kind of ground of salt. I've used really coarse ground salt before, and that's worked well as um, that has worked good as well. So you're just, just going to toss these all together here. Just keep in mind that if you use a different coarseness of salt, that fine ground is going to be a different weight than um, than coarse ground salt. So just keep that in mind with your salting. All right, so I'm just starting to pack my curds into my form here. So when packing them in, you wanna make sure that your cheesecloth is first um, a little bit wet with some nice warm whey. So that's gonna help you um, have it not stick so much. And then second thing, as you push, as you pack your um, curds in, you wanna be pushing them down as you go and you wanna put them in very firmly because cheddar cheese, like I talked about before, is a really difficult cheese to press. That's why a lot of um, people have troubles with it because they don't get it to press properly. So just making sure that you press down very firmly as you pack it into your form there. So pack it into your form, then you wanna go around and you wanna pull up all the sides trying to make sure that there's the least amount of wrinkles in there as possible. And then you're gonna take one side of the flap and you're gonna pull it over and you're gonna pull it as flat as you can get it before you put your lid on. So we're gonna come back in about one hour and redress this after it's had a chance to kinda of knit those curves together a little bit. So pressing cheddar cheese is really difficult, like I was saying before. It needs a really high pressure to press properly. So this press that I have here, it's okay guys, this, this press that I have here, it doesn't have a spring or anything on it. I could probably add a spring somehow, but I've never gotten around to doing that. So I just twist it as tight as I can, and then I come back every once in a while and twist it tighter. So usually when you press a cheese, you want to start off with like a lower pressure, but with this type of press that is not always pressing basically, once it goes down a little bit, it's not pressing for a little bit until I come back and turn it again. With this type of press, you really want to make sure that you're tightening it as much as you can if you're doing something like a cheddar cheese because you need all the pressure you can get. So I'm going to come back to this one in about an hour and redress it and retighten it. Now I'm going to show you my DIY press. So basically what I got here is my canning pot and I've got a cutting board stuck in the bottom of it. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my springform pan in the bottom. And then I'm going to put my cheesecloth in there. Okay, so I have packed my curds into my springform pan here. And just like my other press, I'm going to pull up on the sides and try and get the least amount of wrinkles possible. And then I'm going to stretch one side over the top. I will come back and do that a little bit better. But I'm going to get as least amount of wrinkles possible. Now I'm going to take the follower of the springform pan and put it on there. And then, if you have a bucket that fits on top of there, sometimes I use my um, ice cream maker insert. And then you are going to start stacking things on top. So of I've that. got my bucket full of water. I've got a few books stacked on top, and I'm going to come back and see how it's doing in an hour, redress it, and assess from there how many more books I need to stack on top of it. I'm going to guess a lot more. Like I said, cheddar cheese is quite hard to press. You need a lot of weight, and it's difficult to do without a designated press, but it's possible. Good morning everybody. So I am back at the cheese pot again today. I am doing a little batch of feta in there and I just wanted to show you uh, my cheeses from yesterday. So these are the traditional cheddars that I made yesterday. So this one right here is in that DIY press that I um, just posted a picture of. The one that's being pressed with the books. So you can see that it isn't pressed beautifully but it's good enough. And so this is good enough for if you're gonna vacuum seal. If you wanted to kind of try and natural rind this, you would have fall into problems with that because of all the little cracks. But because it is gonna be vacuum sealed in a couple days, I'm not worried about that. And then this one here is for my actual press and it's pressed nicely. So other than the taste, probably the thing I love most about making cheddar is that um, once you take it out of your presses, it's ready to just dry and then go into your cheese cave. You don't have to brine it um, because it's already had that salt incorporated. And sometimes I'm not great about remembering to take my cheeses out of the brine or remembering to keep my brine in the fridge and take care of it all those kinds of things so sometimes I just find that cheddar is my easier cheese to make even though it's a bit difficult to, to press but it's my easier cheese to make because once it comes out of the press it's ready to go it's ready to sit there dry and then go into the cave and I don't have to worry about it after that